if you're running on the south side, I just want to invite you to go ahead and make your way in over here. Just want to welcome you guys. You guys want to go ahead and stand with us. Uh, let's just begin to worship. Y'all pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Uh, Lord, I thank you that you are a big God and you're a loving God. All right? I just say you're an awesome God this morning. I just proclaim that. You're an awesome God this morning. So, Lord, we thank you for loving us. Lord, I pray that this morning that you just receive all the glory and all the honor through the songs that we sing and the words that you placed on Adam's heart this morning. Lord, we just follow you this morning and dive in to your love with reckless abandon this morning. Or you say you inhabit the praises of your people. So, Lord, this morning, Lord, we give you all the praise. You're so worthy of it and so much more. It's in Jesus' name we sing, we pray, we dance. We all said amen. And high. Lord, we thank you that you are the highest praises. Lord, we thank you that you are the Lord of all. Lord, you're the Lord of our circumstance. You're the master. Lord, we bow before you and we honor you because you are the risen Savior. You are the risen King. And Lord, we thank you that in everything that we do, Lord, that we'll do it so that you may be glorified, Lord, so that you may be put on that pedestal, that you are the highest of highs. Lord, you are the high that takes us from where the bottom says we need to be. Lord, you're the one that rises us up to take us to where you want us to be. So we worship you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. And we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Aren't you glad that we serve a risen Savior? Amen? Amen. Just take a couple of moments to the person to your left and right. Let them know they look good. And then take your seat. All right, all right. Man, I'm so glad to see these faces out here this morning. Y'all some good-looking folks. I'm not even playing with you. Y'all, we got a good-looking church. You don't believe it? Just wait till the kids come out. Even, even like two non-good-looking people can make some good-looking kids. I wasn't necessarily y'all the good-looking ones. No, but in, anyways, we're glad that you're here this morning. We know you could have chosen to be anywhere, but we are honored that you guys are here with us this morning. Amen? Amen. So it's a great thing. So if you have not yet had the opportunity to fill out a Connect card, uh, maybe it's your first time being here, or maybe, maybe you've been here a thousand times and just hadn't had the opportunity yet, we want to invite you guys uh, into the Connect side of things. So we have a Connect card. It's just to get some basic information from you. Uh, the ushers are here. If you don't feel comfortable right now raising your hand to get a Connect card, if you will, at the end of service, there's a table back here that's got a red uh, little bucket on it. And then also in the main lobby, we have our Connect spot, and you can find a Connect card there. We just want to get some information from you, let, let you know that we're glad you're here and reach out to you. So with that being said, uh, we have this Sunday, which is right after service at 1 o'clock, we're having Next Steps today, amen? And let me tell you, Next Steps is a great opportunity to get plugged into the local church, to get plugged into the community, not just that Connect, but that our arms can reach out so that we can grab people and bring them in to know Jesus. Isn't that important? Isn't that good? And so the vision and the heart that Pastor Adam and Farah have for this house is that we will be that arm that grabs in the community. We'll be that. So if you would, if you haven't had the opportunity, we would love for you guys to show up today. It is at 910 South Shredway at 1 o'clock. We're going to feed you. Uh, so if you would, just come uh, hear the vision uh, from Pastor Adam himself as to what this house represents, okay? And the second thing is this is going to be our last week of Connect Groups. And all of us said, oh, oh, okay. But, but the good news is, Okay, on the other side of things, uh, it is the last week of Connect Group. So, uh, that's a joke. Uh, so, but you have the opportunity, if you haven't connected with the group, this is a great time to get plugged in 
so that through this holiday season and through the Christmas time, you'll have some people that you'll know, some faces that are familiar to you. If you go to our website, you can click on the Connect Groups and see a list of what we have. Uh, also, we need more Connect Groups. We need more people to step up to help lead a Connect Group. Uh, so if you are interested in that, if you would, on a Connect card that's located outside, if you would, just fill it out. Uh, right on there, connect group leader or love to be a group leader, love to get involved in a group, something along those lines so that we can have that connection with you to get you plugged into some of our connectors so that we can do more within this house, okay? Because we are not a church with small groups. We're a church of small groups, okay? And so that's where the real ministry happens. That's where we can really love on each other, okay? Uh, so the last thing we want to talk about, and all of us men also side a deep side because it is one of the few times I get great breakfast at Rose's. Uh, we will not be having men's breakfast uh, this month to give you the opportunity to spend time with your families uh, so that your kids can actually see you. Uh, that's important. Mine, anyways, they're tired of seeing me, but I'm going to be there, uh, so they're going to have to see me, all right? Uh, so let's pray real quick, uh, but before we pray, I forgot one last thing. If you're giving by cash, we do have an offering envelope for you. Uh, if you will, just barely put your hand up like this. I promise we can, we can get one of those in your hand. They're going to pass that out while I pray. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that we have the opportunity to worship you, Lord. We thank you that as we enter back into worship, Lord, we, we just repent for anything that we've done, any hindrance that's between us and you. Lord. And we thank you that your mercy and your grace, it abounds in our lives, Lord. And we thank you that we will worship you with everything that we have because you deserve it. Because you sent your son to die on the cross so that we may have life and have life everlasting and eternal. So, Lord, as we enter into this time, it's not about us. It's all about you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. If you would, go ahead and stand up, and we'll enter back into worship. I'm going to believe this morning that he knows your name. You are created on purpose. And he knew your name. And he knows your name. So, I, I pray that as we sing this song that you just come into or step into the understanding of that he knows you. And he sees you better than I think sometimes that we even see ourselves. So, so, so know that this morning you are known. Know that we have a loving father. We have a savior. A risen Savior that knows your name, who walks with you, who talks with you, and want nothing more than just for you to get to know him more. So sing this with us. stand in God. Come on, we, we have the authority. Come on, we've got the power. God said, I give it to you. He said, I need you to go do some things. Come on. But we got to stand in it. You got to take authority. You've got to take power. It's already available. I'm telling you, the enemy cannot 
If you'll stand in God, the enemy cannot take what belongs to you. And I declare today that he will not. Come on, he will not take what belongs to you. We'll stand in authority. We'll stand in the power that was given to us. Amen? Well, Father, we thank you this morning. I thank you for the power. I thank you for the authority. I thank you for your word, Father, that we stand in. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. Father, I thank you that we declare your word over our life. We declare your word over our life. Father, you're truly an amazing God. Truly an amazing God. And Father, we just thank you this morning for who you are, for what you're doing, and for how you're doing it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, give somebody a high five. Tell them they look good. Tell them they power in Jesus. Come on, power in the name. Yeah, come on now. We serve a big God. We serve a big God. Come on. Woo. Hallelujah. How is everybody this morning? Come on, I like it. We've extended the front row this morning. I like it. Come on. Had everybody fit on it. That's what I like. Amen. Come on, everybody get close. Hallelujah. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, uh, God's good. Just in case you didn't know. Just in case you, you needed to know. God's good. Amen. He's got big things for you. And he's bigger than you think he is. Come on. He's bigger than you think he is. Whatever picture of God you have, whatever imagination you have that God is, he's bigger. Come on, he's bigger. Come on, that wasn't a big enough amen. He's bigger. Amen. Come on. And God wants to do some things in your life. God wants to do some things in your life. He wants to take you to another level. He wants you to pray, hope, and dream about the next level. You know, we're in this series, Permission to Dream. And this series kind of came out of really, really God just saying, man, I want my people to start dreaming again. I want my people to start dreaming about what they can be in me and what they can accomplish and what they can do. Because a lot of times, what do we do, man? We, we step back, don't we? We quit dreaming because of life. Kids, work, the job, the marriage isn't going well, right? We just, we tend to step back and we quit dreaming about what God can do. Our main scripture for this series is Ephesians 3.20. So if you have your Bibles, open it up to that. Ephesians 3.20. And it says, Now to him that is able to carry out his purpose and to do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask or think, beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams, according to his power that works in us. You know what God's saying this morning? He's saying, listen, I want to do some things for you. He says, I want to go beyond your greatest hopes, your greatest power, your greatest prayers, and your greatest dreams. He says, I want to do that. But God's saying, I need you to dream. Come on, I need you to dream about where you want to be and what you want to go. I need you to dig inside and I need you to find those dreams. I need you to find those dreams inside of you that he's placed there. I need you to dig them out and say, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, gonna to dream again. I'm going to dream again. I'm going to extend myself. I'm going to find out what's going on. He says, I need you to do that. You know why? Because I want to do. This is God. He says, I want to do super abundantly above all that you could pray, hope, and even dream about. 
But you know what happens a lot of times is we stop God. Uh Uh-oh. Nobody got walked out on that, so I'm good. (laughs) But we stop God a lot of times because we don't pray. And we don't hope. And we don't dream anymore. And God's saying, I can't do abundantly above what you won't even start. He's saying, I want to do super abundantly above all of that. And this last part of this this scripture, it says, according to his power that works in us. His power that works in us. I want you to hang on to that because we're going to get back to that in a minute, okay? But just think about it. It's his power that works in you. He's saying not only, come on, I don't just want you to pray, hope, and dream, but I'm going to give you the power to do it. Come on. Some people got excited. I like that. That's come on. We don't have to do it alone. We don't have to do it by ourselves. He said, I'm going to give you the power to do it. I'm a little excited this morning. I'm sorry because, you know, this, this excites me. Because there was times in my life that I quit dreaming. Anybody else? Come on. Times in your life that you just quit dreaming about how big God is. About what he can do. Super abundantly more. You think, well, I can, I can dream about a lot. Well, God can do more. God can go beyond anything that you dream and hope for. You know, we said this um, in Psalms 37. It says, trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. But I like to say it like this. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and be faithful. See, to to befriend faithfulness is to be full of faith. Come on, we got to be full of faith. There's some things that we need to access this power. Come on, we got to access this power. But, man, how many understand God? Yeah. (laughs) Not near enough. Come on, not near enough. Why? Because he's too big. And if we could understand God fully, why would we need faith? Come on. So it's faith that we have. We've got to be full of faith. We've got to understand that there's something inside of us that God's placed in there. And we've got to access it by faith. It says, delight, uh, Psalms 37, uh, verse 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of of your heart. So I want to know, what are your desires? Have you explored your heart and talked with God and found out what they are? What what is deep inside of you that God's been talking to you about? Maybe the thing that you have just, man, I, you know, I, 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 I don't understand how it can happen, so I'm not going to dream about that anymore. I'm not going to dream about having a good marriage anymore because it's just been too much. I'm not going to dream about my kids becoming great because you know what? They just, it's just too much. I'm not going to dream about having that, that spouse that's just, you know, because it's just too much. But God's saying, dig inside again. Dream again. Then we talked about if your dream is to increase, which our dreams should be, come on. I don't dream about decreasing. (laughs) I dream about increasing, right? I dream about increasing. Come on. Are you faithful with what you have now? And we went to the parable of the talents, right? And God's given us something that we need to be faithful with. Because if we want to go to the next level, and God wants you to go to the next level, come on, what are we doing with what we have now? Come on, are we... Are we volunteering in the children's department? Are we volunteering as ushers? Are we giving God, you know, it's just like people are like, well, that's my Sunday morning. You know, I just, I, just, I just want to come to church and enjoy. But you know what? God's given you a talent to be used. God's given you an ability to be used for him. 
So are we using that? Because if we want to dream about doing more and God says, you're not using what I've... Come on. We said this, we said stewards must know the personality and character of their Lord. You know, if we don't know the personality and the character behind God, how can we worship him? God expects us to know him well enough to apply the spirit as well as the letter of his instruction. You see, if we just read the word, but we don't apply the spirit behind it and understand why God tells us to do things, then it just won't make sense. Because, you know, it, with God, things don't make sense. Why did, why did he have to die on a cross in order to be a king? Why do we have to give in order to get? See, things don't make sense. But that's where faith comes in. That's why God said, I've given you something. And that brings us to our next point. Our next point, dreaming takes faith. Dreaming takes faith. Okay, so our first scripture, we talked about his power, right, that's in us. So let's talk about that for just a second. Let's talk about that power that's in us. Romans 12, 3 says this. It says, God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. He's given you a measure of faith. He's given you something to believe with. He's given you something to grow, something to learn, something to know, something. He's given that to you, to every person. He says, I'm not holding it back. He said, here, I've given you some. So this power that he's put inside of us, this power that we are to do, I, I think it's faith. And I'm going to talk about it right here. Hebrews 11 says this. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's Hebrews 11, 1. For by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things that are seen are not made of things which are visible. And then verse 6 says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You see, all of this comes, you see, and I got to thinking about this. Because if, if, if God's put a desire in me to dream, what about God's dreams? Anybody ever thought about that? What about God's dreams? So I've got a couple of videos that I want to show, and these are, these are going to these are going to last just a little bit. They're going to go back to back. There may be a little delay between them, but I want you to I want you to watch these videos, and I want you to think about these being dreams of God. Who created all of these? And then he answers for himself: the one who leads forth the starry host one by one and calls them each by name because of his mighty strength and great power not one of them is missing <laughs> if you want to get a glimpse of it here's a composite shot of our subdivision the milky way galaxy is taken by com combining hundreds of thousands of photographs uh, obviously we haven't managed to get outside of the milky way galaxy to take a picture of it but um, NASA folks are pretty sure that's what it looks like. It has a, a barred nucleus. It's a barred spiral galaxy. And you're like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's 100,000 light years across. So if you want to go visit your neighbors on the other side of the subdivision, you just have to go 186,000 miles a second for 100,000 years and boom, you're at their house. Um, <laughs> in our little neighborhood home called the Milky Way Galaxy, you say, well, where are we? I'm, I'm looking for us on there. You know, we, we got to be right in the center, obviously. I'm sure we're right in that, right there in that middle. No, we, believe it or not, we're not even in the center of our own subdivision, okay? So affirming again tonight, it's not about you and it's not about me. We don't even live in the center of our own subdivision and you don't want to live in the center of the subdivision because it's scary in the center of the subdivision. We, you say, well, where do we live? Well, we live way out between a couple of the spiral arms. You don't want to live in there either because that's dangerous 
dangerous territory inside the bands. We live in that little clear zone between a couple of the bands, about two thirds of the way out. We're living somewhere about there. And you're, you're like, well, I don't, I don't see me. <laughs> no, because we couldn't put a mark on the diagram that you could see that would be the right relative size to our solar system. You know, that's our little cul-de-sac in the subdivision that we couldn't even put our solar system on here in relative size to the Milky Way galaxy for you to see. It's that small inside the Milky Way galaxy. Scientists say our solar system is the size of a quarter and the Milky Way galaxy is the size of the North American continent. So our whole solar system is a quarter in the size of an area as big as the North American continent. We're not that consequential in our own subdivision called the Milky Way galaxy. And somewhere in there is a star, one of these billions of stars. It's not the biggest, the baddest, the brightest. It's just one of the stars of the billions of stars. We call it the sun and around it tonight are orbiting these balls, one of which is called Earth. It's our home. That's you and me. Pink bands in the image, they're, they're rays of sunlight reflecting off Voyager because sun, even though nearly 4 billion miles away, was in view. And it just so happened that suspended in one of the beams of sunlight was a tiny little speck. Do you see it? Yeah. For you guys in the cheap seats, I'll blow it up just a tad for you. It's, it's, it's there. If you're still not with me, it's right there. I don't want anyone to miss it. And we can just go back to the, the big shot for a second. It's a picture of Earth from 3.7 billion miles away. And it just so happened to be caught in a ray of light. And one famous astronomer of the day said of it, just remarking that everyone who's ever lived their lives lived them out on that tiny pale blue dot that he called a moat of dust suspended in a sunbeam. I don't know about you, when I first saw it, a shrinking feeling came over me. And I knew in that moment that my life was a tiny little blip on the radar of history, a vapor, infinitesimal little life. You say, well, Louis, you're, you're making me feel small. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to make you feel small. I'm trying to help you see that you are small. but it's significant insignificance. Because as tiny as we are, we are known and prized by majesty who sent for us and loves us and knows us even though we are teeny tiny little bitty people on a little bitty speck floating through the vast cosmos that he has made. Just like he could name every star as he called them into being and put them in their places. He could start in this building tonight all the way up in the top with you right there. And he could call you by your name and he could move to you and call you by your name and you by your name. And the great creator of all the heavens and the earth could move through this auditorium and call every single person in this building by name tonight. He knows us and is aware of us and loves us and has come to invite us into a relationship with him that will never ever end it's amazing when you think about it when you think about how big he is that we know his name 
I want to take you on a quick journey outward if you're up for it. I think you guys are tonight. Um, Houston would be like kind of the home of the space program, by the way, um, at least one of the key centers. And so I want to take you out a little bit. Um, we're going to go 93 mi million miles out from that little pale blue dot to our near star, our sun, which is what we call it. We're not sure what God calls it. He named it, but we call it the sun. You know it. Um, it burns you up. You're around here. You get it. Um, by the way, nice day here in Houston. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got outside. You get 16 of those a year here in Houston. So I hope you loved every minute of it. You understand probably more than the other cities that we're gonna be going to about the sun. It's a raging ball of fire, people. It is not just up there, you know, nice and happy, smiley face coming up, you know, as we used to draw it as kids. It is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface. It is raging intensity. It is like billions of nuclear bombs going off every second. So strong, it's sending light out at 186,000 miles a second. It only takes the beam of light eight minutes to cover the 93 million mile journey journey from the sun to your skin in Houston, Texas. And it came out of the mouth of God. We cannot think that he is some kind of mamby-pamby God, some kind of mealy little weak God. He is ferocious, this God we are worshiping tonight. He is intense in power and holiness and radiant splendor and might. And he opens his mouth and things like that just come out of his mouth. We got to remember that tonight. That's who we're worshiping. It's 100 times the diameter of Earth. In case you don't know how big that is, take a look. This gives you a little perspective on us. And that's why tonight when you go to sleep, you want to thank God that we're 93 million miles away from the sun. This next image comes to us from the Swedish Solar Institute. They're doing close-up studies of the surface of the sun, and that's what you get. It's raging fire. Scientists say it would take the gross national product of the United States of America for seven million years for your local power company to run the sun for one second. And it's just one of the billions of stars in our subdivision called the Milky Way, which is one subdivision among hundreds of billions of subdivisions in the known universe that God has made. He's big. Go out a little ways. Let's use that ruler we talked about, okay? The light year, you remember? 5.88 trillion miles. Let's use that and go out. We're just 93 million miles here. That's nothing. Let's take some strides. 440 light years out. We come to this beautiful constellation called Pleiades. I just put this one in because it's so beautiful. And because it's mentioned many times in scripture, in the Old Testament books, the prophets, and in Job, Job's having that conversation with God and God's trying to remind him that he's the one that's big and Job is the one that's small. And he says to Job, Job, can you hold the Pleiades in your hand? To which Job looks up and says, no. And God's like, well, there. One place in the scripture, it says that God measures the universe in the span of his hand the whole universe. <laughs> He's like, yeah, it's about right there. Let's go out a little further. There's so many amazing things. We're gonna go a thousand light years out to the Vela Pulsar. Check this out. This is absolutely stunning. Isn't that cool? Well, it's probably more than cool. It's um, hot, but it's interesting and amazing. You say, well, what's a pulsar? Um, I don't know. Um, I don't have a degree in astronomy, okay? Um, a star explodes into a supernova, can collapse back on itself into a magnetic intensity. Now, this is a highly magnetized neutron star. It's oscillating 11 times a second, the center of it. And it's, it's huge, by the way. I love it because it looks like double bow and arrow shooting an arrow out, but it's sending out this intense signal out. And not only is it beautiful to look at, thousand light years away from us, but we aimed a radio telescope at the Vela Pulsar. That's what we're using to see if there are other people out there trying to talk to us. And uh, we aimed it at the Vela Pulsar. And this is what we got back from the Vela Pulsar. This is what that thing sounds like right there. It just does that all day and all night. 
I, I don't know Morris code, but it could be tapping out. No, he's big. He's really, really big. He's a whole lot bigger than you think he is. He's really, really big. This God we worship, he's really, really, really big and a whole lot bigger than you think he is. Didn't want to miss out on the worship. Didn't want to miss out. All creation was glorifying God. And the Bella Paul Star said, all right, here we go. Now let's jump 8,000 light years out. This is the Hourglass Nebula. Yeah, that's, I think God just put that one up there for fun. It's a dying star emitting tons of gases that are cooling and creating this beautiful thing. The star that's dying is not the one you see to the left, but the one right in the center of the eyeball. I don't know about you, when I was growing up, the ultimate trump in my house was my mom saying, well, you better watch out and be careful because God is watching you. Well, it turns out she was right after all. God sees everything and knows everything. I don't know about y'all, but that kind of puts things in a little bit of a perspective. You want to know how big God is? He measures the universe by the span of his hand. Just our galaxy is 100,000 light years. Just our galaxy, not the universe, just our galaxy. You see, the, the God that we serve is big. Come on, the God that we, that we talk to on a daily basis is really, really big. When God dreams, he dreams big. Come on, when he, thought, when he said, let there be light, and it shot out. When he, when he said, let, started forming all of these things in the universe, and I, I'm fascinated by everything. I'm fascinated by the universe and the, the stars and what are that. I mean, that just, just shows how big he is and the kind of dreaming that God did. He's like, oh, I'm going to put this here, I'm going to that there, and we're, gonna, we're just going to, hey, and you just keep forming stars over here, and so it just keeps going, and you know what I mean? And things just keep rotating on themselves, and things just keep, and it's, that's how big our God is. And he said this, Genesis 1. Then God said, Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, let us make man in our own image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish in, of, of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Do you know what that is? That's, that's the same God that, that created the universe. That's the same God that put this little planet tilted just right, orbiting in, in our solar system just enough so that we can live on it. That's the God that did that. And he goes, you know what? I want to dream about creating man that's God dreaming right there about us let us make man in our image according to our likeness he says, I just want to dream about what I can create I just want to dream about what they'll do I just want to dream about them coming and worshiping me because they want to not because they have to I just want to dream about man on this little earth in the midst of a big universe. God dreamed about you, about what you would do. If God dreamed about creating you and giving you dominion over all creations, then why shouldn't you dream big? Why shouldn't you dream big? The psalmist said in Psalms 8, 
verses 3 through 5. It says, when I consider your heavens and the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor. God says, I created you for a purpose. You weren't an accident. You didn't just happen to come by. God dreamed about you before he formed you. The God that created all of what we saw and and billions more said, I want to know you. I want to know who you are. I want to know what you have going on. I want to talk with you. I want to walk with you. Come on, I want to have a relationship with you. So much so that he sent his son. Because he knew that sin would pull us away. To die on a cross. So we could get back. That's what God dreams about. God dreams about you and the relationship that he wants to have with you. God dreams about you and who you are. I don't know about you, but that just puts me in awe. That just puts me in awe of how big God really is and how much he wants to have a relationship with me. He just wants you to dream again. Dream big. Because we serve a big God. Dearly Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for every person that is sitting here. I thank you for every person that is in the sound of my voice, Father. Lord, help us to dream big again. Help us to dream about you again. Father, you're truly an amazing God. Father, all I want to do is worship you, praise you and honor you and glorify you. So if you guys would keep your heads bowed, I just want to make sure that the people that are in here, that I want you to have a relationship with the God that I serve. I want you to have a relationship with this amazing Father in heaven that wants to have a relationship with you. So I just want to ask this morning, if there's anybody in here that doesn't have a relationship with God or maybe you have fallen back and been like, you know what, I used to serve him, but man, I don't serve him, but man, I, I want to come back and serve him again. I want to come back into relationship with him again. If that's you this morning, would you just raise your hand? Is there anybody in here that says, I want to come back? Thank you. I'm going to come back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the ones that have raised their hand this morning. I thank you that they want to come back in relationship with you. If all of you, if you guys with your heads bowed, if you guys would just pray with me. Everybody pray this. We're going to pray with the ones that raised their hand this morning. If everyone would just say this after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today. I open myself up to you. I give you my life. I want to have a relationship with you. I want to serve you. So I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give him a hand clap. If you prayed that this morning for the first time or you renewed, we want to know about it. 
We have connect cards that we would ask, man, if you just grab one, put your name on it, mark on it that, hey, I renewed my life today, a new commitment. We would love to get a hold of you. We've got some information we want to get to you. Man, you are a child of God now. You are a child of God. You are back in the graces of God. And God knows who you are. Come on. So I want to change real quick. I want to shift gears. We're going to take up our offering today. We're going to give back. Amen. So there's two things I want to do this morning. We're, we're going to do two offerings in one. So our normal tithes and offerings for that, you can put that in there. But we also want to take up an offering for, the, for people that need help during Christmas that are part of our family. We do this, this is our third year to do this. We did this even before we were at church. But we take up extra offering every year. And we give that to people in the church that, that maybe single parents that just don't have enough. You know, if you were here, if you were here when Carrie gave her testimony, I encourage you to go find that online. She gave her testimony about, because she was a single mom last year. She's married now, come on. <laughs> she was a single mom last year and we helped her and it was it, it was a time when she had already told her kids she'd already told her kids that hey we're just not going to have a Christmas this year I just don't have the finances to help and to, to, to buy you a Christmas present she had already told them that and then we were able to God had put on our heart to, to give her some money last year and we gave her some money and man it just everybody needs to have Christmas and so that's the second offering. So if you need an offering envelope and you want to give specifically toward the Christmas offering, um, get another envelope, mark on there what it's for, mark it on your envelope that you have now. If you give online, we have several ways that you can give. We have Venmo, just mark it on there, Christmas offering or uh, Heart for the House, I think is what JB called it last week. Um, give toward that. Um, give it online, you can mark that. And we'll make sure that we give to the to the. Uh, single parents that need it or just anyone that needs help this Christmas. So again, I said we have several ways that you can give. You can give in this offering. You can give online. You can give by Venmo. But we have, we have, an, we have a confession that we say every time for our offering. So I'm going to ask that you guys say this with me. This is, this is more than a confession just over the offering, but it's over our life. So if you guys would say this with me. As I give my tithes and offerings... I confess that God is first in my life. I give with a cheerful heart because I love God. In 2019, I am healed, whole, healthy, blessed, and prosperous in Jesus' name. Father, we just thank you this morning. I thank you for everyone that is here. I thank you for what you're doing in our lives. And I thank you that we are dreaming again. Father, you're truly an amazing God. Father, we worship you with our offering today. We give unto you, Father. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Ushers, you guys can go ahead and pick up the offering. While they're doing that, I just want to mention a couple of things. We do have our next step class that starts at 1 o'clock today. If you've been coming for a while and you just want to know more about who we are, you want to get involved and you want to serve, come. We'll feed you lunch. We'll take care of your kids. That, that in and of itself may be the reason you come. You know, a couple of hours, they just take care of your kids. You know, and, and we'll, we'll tell you more about Connect Church and about the heart behind what we do and why we do it. Because we truly love people. And so if you could, at 1 o'clock, it's at 910, I think, in the bulletin. Uh, it's got the address, 910 South Treadaway. It's an old Conley printing building. It has Freer Group across the front. Um, we have offices in there. That's, that's our church offices also. So come at 1 o'clock and, uh, and be a part of that. And, uh, you know, start using your talents and your gifts that God's put in you. Amen? Amen. Let me pray, and then we'll get out of here. Father, I just thank you for today. I thank you for every person that's here, Father. I thank you that they are here on purpose, for a purpose. Father, show us what our purpose is. Show us what our destiny is. Show us what we're to be doing and how we're to be doing it, Father. Lord, you're truly an amazing God. And Father, as we leave today, we worship you. 
We honor you and we glorify you with everything inside of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, we love you guys. Y'all have a great afternoon. I hope to see some of y'all at 1 o'clock. Y'all be blessed.